All right, guys, today we're going to talk about Gervonta Davis versus Isaac Cruz, a great fight. I would say it's much better than the Devin Haney versus Jojo Diaz fight because both of these dudes had power, you know, and everything can change with one punch when it comes to them. So first off, I want to talk about what I liked about Isaac Cruz or what strategy he used in the first couple of rounds. Well, in the first couple of rounds, I actually think that he went for the head a little bit and it, he forced Javon Davis to constantly bend down at the waist. Now, once Javon Davis was bending down at the waist, it was timing him with right up because of the body or right up because of the head, which is what he did exactly. Now, in the later rounds, he wasn't able to, or he stopped, he slowed down a little bit, and he wasn't able to do that same thing. He was just swinging wildly, he was throwing those hooks, and he did lose some rounds because of that, because he started to become predictable. He was just a forward guy who didn't really move his head anymore, and his head movement also wasn't there you know, in the later rounds, although he did bring it back in the in the championship rounds, he wasn't able to use it throughout the fight because I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just not natural for him. Maybe he, it was just too tiring. Like guys, you have to realize moving your head is, is tiring. It is exhausting. So it's not easy to constantly move your head like that for the whole fight. A lot of people say, oh, you, you stop moving your head and you're fucking, you're a fucking bum. It's not as easy, man. And then for the people who say that Gervonta Davis is a bum because he couldn't land the shot on, on Isaac Cruz. Guys, have y'all ever fought a peekaboo style midget? A lot of you don't realize that it's hard to catch those kind of dudes. And it's not only that, it's his footwork, man. His footwork is, he's not just at the same place moving his head, man. He, he combines footwork, he combines his punching, and he throws punches from, you know, different different positions. He throws punches in different spots. He doesn't just throw the right hook. He also throws the right uppercut to the body, and the right hook to the body. He also throws, he doesn't throw as many straight punches, which is what, you know, I would have liked to see more from him. But he doesn't really need it, man. He All he needs is those hooks and uppercuts, and he was able to give Javante a tough time. Another thing that I liked about about Isaac Cruz is his blocking, man. He was able to block a lot of those shots. Those commentators are going like, oh, Javante is landing all these shots, and then it doesn't, it didn't happen, man. I'm, again, a good eye will be able to see if something is blocked or not. A good eye could be able to see if a punch is blocked or not. A lot of people just shout, hey, he landed a shot, oh my gosh. A lot of people just go like that because they don't have a good eye. They don't see when a shot is blocked. And a lot of those shots by Javante Davis, man, is just blocked, man. I don't know, I don't know how, how people can give Gervonta like eight rounds or more, personally. I think it's a draw or a 7-5 for either fighters. It was a draw or a 7-5 for either fighters. I'm leaning more on a draw and then 7-5 for Isaac Cruz and then 7-5 for Gervonta Davis. So those are the things that I liked about Isaac Cruz in his fight. The body work, the variety of the punches, the inside work as well. He was pushing Gervonta around, which is something that not a lot of people really did. I mean, Leo Santa Cruz was able to do it, but but he was he was getting countered. And that's not what happened to to Isaac Cruz, man. Isaac Cruz's defense is pretty underrated. That peekaboo guard, again, it's not as easy to figure out, man. One of my most frustrating sparring partners that I ever had was a short, stocky, and he was a muscular dude who was using the peekaboo style. He just kept on coming forward. I'm telling you, no matter how good you are, it's gonna give you some troubles in the early rounds. It takes you some time to figure out the rhythm of those kind of fighters. Now let's move on to Gervonta Davis. Gervonta Davis's best weapon for this fight, in my opinion, was the straight left. It was piercing through the guard of, uh, of or no, it wasn't the straight left. It was the the rear hook. It was the left hook through the guard of uh, of Isaac Cruz, and then he also threw some nice uppercuts in there, some left uppercuts. Although a lot of them were blocked. I still think that it, it made Isaac Cruz hesitant to enter. So every time Isaac Cruz will try to enter, every time Isaac Cruz will try to attack, he'll always be caught by that by that left uppercut by Gervonta Davis. And then of course the classic check hook from the southpaw. He will also use that a lot. Although those those right hooks kind of seemed like slaps to me, it wasn't really anything powerful. His his best punch really for this fight was the rear shots. Those lead hands. You know, it didn't really work as much. He had a good jab, I'm gonna give him that. Those jabs did land, but uh, it wasn't as damaging. And we gotta give it to Cruz, man. Cruz is a fucking tough fighter. Cruz had a great chin, and Cruz knew how to take it. Cruz knew how to take it. Cruz knew how to how to keep coming forward even though he was, he was getting hit with shots. And he never allowed Javante Davis to gain confidence by moving forward, by, by staying on the front foot, and by backing him up. 
Isaac Cruz was getting backed up at times, but he didn't allow himself to stay in that position for a long time. He regained the position, he regained the center of the ring, and then in the end, Giovante was just running for his life. He was just running away, he was Cubaning his way out of there. He was Cuban styling his way to a victory. And yeah, I do I do agree with 115 to 113, but 116, 113 is, or 116, 112 is sort of just, it's not, it's not something that I saw, okay? Maybe you guys saw it differently. But uh, I just feel like Gervonta didn't do enough to get 116 to 112. 115, 113, yeah. 115, 113 for Cruz, also possible. A draw, also possible. And let's ask the question, does this, res does this deserve a rematch? Well, I think it does, but Gervonta doesn't want it because he knows what it's like to, to fight that kind of guy. He'd much rather prefer Cambosos or other fighters than Cruz because Cruz gave him a lot of troubles. You know, and don't even talk about the injury and all that shit. I mean, I personally think it's just an excuse. It's just an excuse, man. Injury or not, I think it was... He still had, he's still gonna have some troubles, injury or not. I mean, we already saw it coming. A lot of people just underestimated Pitbull Cruz. I, a lot of people said in the beginning that he was gonna get caught with an uppercut. I was like, man, it's not as easy to land the uppercut on that, on that peekaboo style. And I was right. And I was right. You guys saw it. All those uppercuts were blocked. All those uppercuts were were missing. He fell short or he was too long. Or, you know, Isaac Cruz got too close and Javanta wasn't able to place those punches accordingly. So his best weapons for this fight wasn't really the uppercuts. A lot of people anticipated that he was gonna land a lot of uppercuts. It was actually long range punches which which became his weapon. The check hook from the long range, the rear hook from the long range that pierces through the guard of uh, Isaac Cruz. Those were his best weapons, man. And also his footwork. Although I'd have to say that his footwork kind of uh, was predictable or he was, he was getting caught because of his footwork. When he was moving to the right, he was getting caught with the left hook. And the reason why Isaac Cruz was landing it is because he was swinging so widely. He was, he was swinging so widely. So let's say I am right here on the center and Gervonta is, is moving to his right side. Gervonta doesn't even have to be right in front of me in order for me to catch him. All I have to do is stay there and then throw the hook wide. And that's what Isaac Cruz did. So on the way out, Gervonta was getting caught with those hooks because he thought that he was already away from the firing range or from the center line. But then because the hooks of, of Isaac Cruz was so wide, he was getting caught with it right and left. I personally think that that Gervonta paid for that decision to try to run away from the action because that's what really made, or that's what made Isaac Cruz have an easier time to, to, to land those shots. He was using his lateral movement against him. Isaac Cruz used Javante Davis's footwork against him. And you can see it in the fight, man. Every time Javante will try to pivot out, he was getting caught with the left hook. Every time Gervonta will try to move to the left, he was getting caught with a right hook, with a wide overhand right. And that's what happened in this fight. And when he did try to bend at the waist, he was getting caught with uppercuts of the body or uppercuts of the head. I would have liked to see Isaac Cruz throw more uppercuts. He didn't throw it enough this fight. But um, if he just combined head hunting and body punching, and or if he just combined hooks and uppercuts, he could have done so much better. I'm not saying he didn't do good, I'm just saying he could have done so much better. He was a little bit too reliant on the hooks tonight, and later on, Javonta was able to duck down under it, Javonta was able to block it, Javonta was able to, to counter it, Javonta was able to move out of the way, and so Javonta did win some rounds, I'm gonna admit that. It's a close fight, again I think it's 7-5 for either fighter or a draw, I don't think it goes anything past that anymore, I don't think it goes 8 rounds for Davis or 8 rounds for Cruz, although some people would argue that. And so that was it, man. This was a quick post-fight analysis. I hope the best for Pitbull Cruz in his, in his future fights. Hopefully he gets a lot of big names out there because this dude is a contender. I mean, he gave Gervonta a tough time tonight. Don't even talk about, Gervonta is just a bum. I mean, look, look, let's give some credit to the opponent as well. Let's not just get into this mentality where we talk about an average fighter was able to make him look like a bum. First of all, Isaac Cruz is, is not an average fighter. It's just that he did not or he hasn't been able to prove himself as much. So we think it's average. You know, just like how people talked about how much of a bum Teofimo Lopez is. 
maybe, just maybe, George Composers is really that good. And that's also the case that I want to make here, man. Maybe, just maybe, Pitbull Cruz is just that good that he made Gervonta look bad. We also have to give credit to the opponent. Don't just talk about, or don't just hate on Gervonta or on Teofimo for looking bad. Also give credit for Pitbull Cruz and for Combosos for being good. Because Gervonta doesn't really, he never looked this bad before, man. And so that speaks a lot for for the kind of caliber or for the kind of fighter that, that Pitbull Cruz is. He was a different style, he was a different height, he was a different type of fighter than, you know, a lot of the previous opponents that Gervonta had. So that was it, see you guys soon, subscribe if you're new, and peace out, man.